I said it. I said that we're back. All gas, no brakes. We're back again to talk about more. I said we had a lot to catch up on. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, Speed Super Summer. You guys, another video. In this video today, we are back again to talk about some very interesting information in relation to Sonic, and more particularly, Sonic's future. This isn't really based around a specific product or a future thing that we already know about. It's more about what's to come that we're not really sure about yet, and kind of where Sega's head's at right now going into it. Sega has recently done their latest question and answer for their investors, taking a look at how they and Sonic the Hedgehog, their biggest franchise, their mascot, did in 2022, more particularly the quarter that Sonic Frontiers released in. There were a lot of questions going into this game, there's a lot of money that was put into this game, a lot of hype, a lot of expectations, high expectations from not only the public, but also Sega themselves. And in this we have a lot of juicy details, not just about this, Sonic Frontiers and what more stuff coming soon for Sonic Frontiers will look like, yeah I know, but also future games, whether that's a Sonic Frontiers sequel, a brand new title, where's the Sonic franchise, more specifically the main Sonic series, where is that heading? We're gonna take a look at this article that has been put together by my Nintendo News. We're going to be viewing it for the mayor, so shout out to them. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. We got a lot to go through. Sega has published its recent investor question and answer session for their latest financial result briefing and have talked a little more about Sonic Frontiers and their ambitions for the new 3D Sonic game. Firstly, the aspect of the game's Metacritic score was addressed, with Sega admitting the score was lower than they expected, which is true. I think it's like a 71, which is brutally low for the game that it is, but that's besides the point, though it is a widely accepted game by a lot of people around the world, and that they will build on the game recently announced DLC, along with promotion of Sonic Prime, the third Sonic film, and merchandising opportunities. Sega also admitted that general development costs have spiraled, and with their next 3D Sonic game, they are proceeding with a bigger budget, even from the basic research stage. So that's kind of a little briefing of what we're going to get, but let's get into the actual meat and potatoes, the actual question and answers. The first thing says, while the Metacritic score for Sonic Frontier was not as high as it was hoped, we know that it was well received by fans. How do you evaluate the quality of this title? And the answer to this is, it's true that the Metacritic score was slightly lower than we expected, but the user score was very high, that is true, it's like 8.8 8, I want to say, I'm just like going off my memory here, I could be wrong, it'll be up on the screen, you'll see it. With that, we believe we have found a title that is widely accepted by a lot of people around the world. It's to be believed that we can build more repeat sales of Sonic Frontiers through pricing, discounts, and the recently announced DLC. We plan to further promote the Sonic franchise in the future, such as the release of Sonic Prime, the third Sonic film, and merchandising opportunities. Now let's break that down a bit. So they're mainly just talking about the reception of the game, how it was received, and while I think it was largely liked by a lot of critics, by a lot of uh, organizations and fans, I think they've seen that. I think they see that it is good. It's not what Forces got, which was just a dry collective shrug from everybody. And now as time has gone on, Forces is even like more and more hated. Frontiers, I think everybody can acknowledge, is a game with very good bones to it and a lot of good meat to it as well. It just needs to build upon more of it, a lot of things that need to be ironed out that can either be done in the DLC or can be done in a future installment. I think Sega and what people like Kishimoto, Izuka, etc. have said, I think they found their formula even if they keep flirting with the idea of doing adventure again. Them sounding confident in this formula gives me hope that they will stick to it and build upon and make it even better, which I am so here for. And then the other part is kind of self-explanatory with them saying that they'll promote the Sonic franchise with the release of Sonic Prime, which will have more episodes this year and then the third Sonic film, which is coming late next year, so it's still a ways out, but that should start filming sometime soon, I hope, and merchandising opportunities. There's a lot of Sonic merchandise, so that part's very exciting. Let's go on to the next one, though. Even though you have done sales for Sonic Frontiers, the average unit price has not decreased that much. Please tell us about your future sales strategies. We are proceeding with this title based on a strategic sales plan. We conducted intensive promotions around the November release, and as announced recently, we have been able to achieve good results so far. And it's true, this game has been selling super well. It's like one of the best selling Sonic games like already. A temporary sale was held around Black Friday, but the selling point has since returned to normal, $60. We have been able to achieve these results while maintaining a certain level of quality, and the number of units sold greatly exceeded our original estimation. We will continue to sell over the long term based on sales strategies such as pricing, 
promotions, and development of future DLC. I said further, it was stupid. As we know, the first batch of Sonic Frontiers DLC, like Sage 1, should be out very soon. It's nothing crazy, it's nothing too wild, but it'll add some more features in, it'll get some more promotion around it. I still think there's some more promotional opportunities for Frontiers in 2023 for them to do, whether it's more comic books, maybe another short. That would be very cool if they announced that. So I don't think you're completely done with Frontiers and the rest you'll get DLC and that, that's that. I still think Sega has a lot of plans for this game in particular still. And this one's very interesting. With the strong performance of Sonic Frontiers and other global titles, will you be focusing more on products like it in the future? We expect development costs for new titles to grow even larger in the future. We will strive to ensure solid quality in the development of major titles from our existing franchises. However, development labor costs will rise due to the impact of the global external environment, and we expect this trend to continue for the foreseeable future. Since it is necessary to take on these challenges for major titles, we are proceeding with a bigger budget, even from the basic research stage. Therefore, we assume that development costs for future new titles will increase accordingly. That is big. That is really good. Simply put, the bigger budget that you have, the bigger and better game you're gonna get. A little Sonic History 101 with Ricardo. Basically, once when Sega restructured, it, it's this big thing that not even a lot of people know about anymore. But after Sonic Boom, Sega had to completely restructure. They were in a terrible spot. They were treating the franchise like complete garbage. They weren't making good games. They were losing money. They just had to completely restructure and figure out what the heck they were going to do, which meant budget titles, releasing games that didn't cost a lot of money to make, and therefore they didn't cost a lot of money for you to buy. Basically, every single Sonic game up until Sonic Frontiers was a budget game that was wasn't even the normal $60 for a video game. Both Forces and Team Sonic Racing were $40, and Sonic Mania was $20 at its initial release, and then I think got like a $30 release when it was officially released physically. That's why games like Forces, Team Sonic Racing are so like short and feel so incomplete and just empty, because they're budget titles. Sonic Frontiers is so dense and so large and so just different from everything we've been streaming for so many years at this point, because it actually got a proper budget. And they're getting more revenue from Sonic Frontiers, because not only is is it because of that and the fact that the game is better because they got a larger budget but because the game actually costs like $20 more which makes a very big difference this isn't saying that next Sonic games will be like a $70 game but don't count that out because a lot of games are doing that now but simply giving Sonic Team a bigger budget and allowing them the freedom to have all of this money at their disposal to really make it the best it can be to have all the resources they need to make this a solid solid title to fully realize their vision is great news I was already very satisfied with Sonic Frontiers, it wasn't super buggy, it looked nice, I could feel that it had a solid budget behind it. And imagine a Sonic game with an even bigger budget and even more development time. That'd be amazing. And that brings us to our final question of the article, and that says, considering your earnings forecast for this fiscal year and the current market environment, I assume that there will be a lot of uncertainty about the next fiscal year. How are you planning to increase repeat sales during the current term, and what's the status of the new titles? Here we go. Since there are many new New titles in previous official years, we look on a strategy of repeat sales in our plan coming into this official year, but it continues to fall short of our forecast. On the other hand, despite the not so favorable market environment, we were able to maintain the same level of repeat sales as in the previous official years. We believe that the prospects are clear to some extent, given that titles that have performed well this term, such as Sonic Frontiers, and with the upcoming DLC, we believe that its sales will increase even further. We are also considering sales strategies, new works are scheduled for the like uh, like the other sh stuff we don't care about and that's where that ends basically <laughs> so it seems like Sega and Sonic team are putting all of their chips on the table when it comes to the DLC for this game. I think that's why they're spacing it out so much, having three different drops throughout this year, each getting slightly bigger as the year goes on, with I think towards the end of the year us getting that new story and the multiple playable characters such as Amy, Knuckles, and Tails, which is gonna be awesome. I think Sega just hopes for Sonic Frontiers to continue just selling more and more as time goes on, and I think the way that they intend for that to happen is with the continued promotion of Sonic Frontiers through this DLC, but also the rest of the franchise. One of the reasons why Sonic Frontiers has done so well is simply because Sonic is a much more viable brand than he used to be. Back in Sonic Forces era, he was like an internet meme. He was a laughing stock. It wasn't really a franchise you could take seriously or really just like be like, oh, that was actually good. Respect to that. But once when the Sonic movie happened, everything changed. We were like, oh wait, Sonic actually can be like popular and like successful. And ever since then, that's what's been happening. The Sonic movies have really given the Sonic franchise as a whole some real legitimacy to it. And with Sonic Prime out and gonna get more episodes at some point this year, I think that brand recognition 
recognition in the franchise will continue to grow. The merchandising for the franchise is great right now. Sonic is in a bunch of stores. It's easy to find. You're welcome, by the way, Sega. I make up like 5% of your yearly revenue. I think it will continue to push Sonic Frontiers, but like I've been saying this entire year, I think we might need another game too. Obviously not Sonic Frontiers successor or something on the level of that, but another Sonic game to be like, oh, you like this one? go play this net big one that we released last year. So like it's something on a smaller scale, but it would still be fun. I believe that there should be some sort of new Sonic game every year. But yeah, guys, that's what Sega had to say. Biggest takeaways from this, they're putting a lot of chips down on the Sonic Frontiers DLC and they have a lot of expectations for Frontiers. They believe that it's a viable future for the franchise and that they'll be investing even more money in giving Sonic Team and Sega just bigger budgets. So the games can be even better and maybe have a better development process than they usually do. This might not be the most exciting thing, it's not like we're getting like leaks or details on the next Sonic game or what could possibly be in development, but kind of having an idea of where Sega's head's at is like so important. Hearing the optimism and them being able to recognize the big success that Frontiers has been so far is just so great to hear. It makes me so happy as a Sonic fan, and, and I really can't wait to see what happens in the future. But with that, guys, that's what Sega had to say. I want to know what you thought. Do you guys think this gives you any hope, or does this make you a little skeptical? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what you guys have to say. Feel free to follow my social media. Links to my Twitter and Instagram are in the description below. You can follow those mind things like my life, future content, and all things Sonic the Hedgehog. But most importantly, if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. This is the number one destination on YouTube for all things Sonic, whether it's video games, TV shows, movies, comic books, merchandise, and more. We talk about it all. It's gonna be a big week guys. We're not slowing down. We're getting things started when Sonic is like kind of quiet right now Even though there is like news like this to talk about I want to make sure that I'm talking about it all with you to keep you all informed all updated all entertained Because this is a franchise we all love and care about and I want to keep this train rolling with all of you new video tomorrow I love all you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out Tell me